back from Texas, back from the eclipse, back from celebrating our little Jane's uh, birthday. So uh, lots to talk about today. Before I get started in all the things that I want to cover, uh, from conference to some scriptural insights, um, I wanted to talk about our sponsor, Cardio Miracle. I'm telling you guys, it's, it is exactly what it says it is. It is a cardio miracle. I love, I love it. Um, I, I do at least two servings a day and it's been such a blessing in my life to have um, the energy and the strength. And I, I owe a lot of it to Cardio Miracle. I really do. It, it uh, the mental clarity, although sometimes that's uh, <laughs> not so clear, but uh, I, it is to me. But the energy to take care of grandkids, to to hike and to move and to think and to to serve and and do all kinds of things, it's 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 awesome. Um, we need to take care of ourselves, and uh, I would go on their website www.cardiomiracle.com. Look, do do your own research. See what it does. See what this uh, formula in Cardio Miracle creating the nitric oxide, and you can research that as well. It's, it's, uh, it's a game changer. And I know some of you have taken it before, bought it, and then now you're not, and you know, you, you kind of like, did it really work? Did it really help? Well, I, I've been steadily, constantly now for um, probably close to two years. I tried it a little bit, like some of you did, went, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. and then um, I, I did it for a specific reason. It was surgery on my ankle before and after, and then I just kind of got off it. But since I've been consistently doing it, I, it's, it's, it's been helpful in a tremendous way. Um, I've talked about my accident uh, where I told my car in Texas and I really feel like the, the ability to recover, all those kind of things uh, are really been helpful. So give it a try. There's a discount if you like it and you want the discount or if you want this, the discount to buy it, it's COWS, C-O-W-S. That's where you put in. And I'll, I'll put the link on it in the comment section. I'll pin it. So it'll be the first comment. So give it a try. Okay, now, um, <laughs> let, me let me ask you a question. Do you feel like at one time you were in a group like this big? Like whether it was in the church or just in society in general and you're in a group like this, right? And, and then something happened in the world, something happened in your community, something happened in your church community, and then the circle got like this. And then something else happened and something, you know, political or this or that, and then it got like this. And then it got like this, and then it got like this. And now it seems like it's just this little tiny, you know, thing like that. That's how I have felt, and Sue and I have been talking about this, how this division uh, that's, that's been, that's either external or, or within our own minds, you know, however, you know, you think divisions occur, um, that the circle of feeling like you're part of something seems to be getting smaller and smaller. I know I have some light coming in from here that the is on my face, but just, just ignore that. And if you just want to turn the video off and listen, um, to the audio, that'd be great. But anyway, um, let's talk about some of the things that have occurred. And typically I like to just talk about, uh, um, politics and religion, <laughs> the two things you shouldn't. So politically we've seen, you know, just this separation. And, and so these groups get smaller and smaller, but that that's even 
within, within political groups. So the conservative movement, if you will, um, you have some pretty popular characters out there. And, and this is, this is, this group has been totally divided. You, you have groups on the left that have been divided. You know, you have the squad that are far, far left. And then you have others that are, you know, more moderate. But on the right, you, you get these, this uh, thing going on with Israel. So you, you'll, you'll have guys like Tucker Carlson, Mark Dice, Candace Owen, uh, uh, um, um, Alex Jones, these, these, these individuals and Tucker, you know, he's, he's like at the top of his game right now. Very, very anti-Israel, anti-Jewish, and very much supporting, uh, uh, the replacement theology. We've talked about that on this channel where the, the, the Jews, I'll just say Jews, um, just so there's no confusion here have been replaced by Christians as far as God's covenant people. Now there, there are um, um, Christian denominations that really hold fast to that. My guess is, is that Tucker was raised that way, that Candace Owens was, that Mark Dice was, and that Alex Jones was. They were raised that way. So it's, it's in their being. So here, we, here they were in this group you know, like I, I loved hearing, you know, what all of them had to say. And, and, and now I'm like, oh, I still like the bulk of everything that they have to say. I feel like I have a connection there. But then what happens is, is, is this, this Israel thing is huge, right? Well, um, for me, the scriptures are obvious. They're obvious. And we're going to go through some of those because within the church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we have the same thing. We have the same thing. We have, we, we have uh, a, a pro-Israel group that's, that's within the church and, and also a pro-Palestinian group within the church. I would say that group is more vocal and bigger than the pro-Israel and Jew group within the church. Um, now this is separate than the United States spending money on Israel or, or giving money that we really don't have to Israel. I'm not really a big fan of that, but supporting and loving Israel, supporting and loving the Jews, um, is, uh, it's, it's in my DNA. I, I just, uh, I, I read the scriptures. I read Nephi who says, what, what have you done to help the Jews? Have you done anything? Here they bring forth the Bible and then you do nothing for them. You do nothing for them. So um, I, I think we have an obligation. I think it's, it's, it's in our covenant to remember the covenant, the ancient covenant people. The very, the very... Uh, Jacob chapter five is that the tree and the roots. Who are they? Who are they? Who are, who, who, what is the tree? What are the roots? What is that? The natural. And we dig, you know, the Lord of the vineyard has his servants dig about the roots, fertilize the roots or dung it and water it and care for those roots. That's the covenant. That is the ancient covenant. That's, and we get grafted into that. We get grafted into that. So we could talk about that um, for a little bit here. In fact, let's do that before we get into this other, because I think that's probably part of Come Follow Me at least a week or two ago. It's been so long since... I've ever even been to Sunday school. But li listen to this. Th this is so interesting because um, this, this allegory in Jacob 5 should tell us who, who 
and and what group we should be looking to and 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 being um, uh, tied to. Um, so the house of Israel is like unto a tame olive tree. The house of Israel, the house of Israel, and and it's the covenant. It is the covenant. Now get this: we have the word in 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 this. Uh, it's a long chapter, but um, the word preserve, the word preserved or laid up which is similar, that the phrase laid up or gathered or preserved is, um, is mentioned about 25 times, 25 times. Now, when we think of, of the fruit being preserved, remember, remember when our, uh, our parents or our grandparents or even our, uh, spouses now or us as in, as guys we would we would bottle fruit or bottle salsa or something right and and in that process you you have a lid and then you screw on a ring over that lid that has a rubber kind of a rubber gasket and then and then it it you create a temperature a heat which causes a suction and that lid to what? Seal. And then that preserves the fruit. So the sealing, the sealing. So I think of a seal as when it comes to Jacob 5 is, is the sealing through a covenant, is through the covenant. And the covenant comes from the roots and the roots come from the house of Israel. That 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 are the the Jews are the ancient covenant people. Now you can you can get into all kinds of theories about well they're not really Jews and they're not really this. You know what? If their if their heart is pulling them to Jerusalem, and they they adhere to Judaism, and it's 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 and, and then you could include the Messianic Jews in that. That's who we're talking about. We have to be because that's who's going to that land. Now, um, we could talk a whole thing on this preser on preserving and sealing, but the sealing is the crowning ordinance, right? And it's what preserves the covenant. It's what preserves the covenant covenant through Abraham, Isaac, and then Jacob. Now, I think I brought this up in the last video I did. But it, it was interesting to me that the prophet refused to say Isaac and Jacob. He just said Abraham. And I think I know why. He doesn't want to offend another group. And that other group are the um, Arab nations or Muslim nations. But we have to see where the covenant came through. We have to see where the covenant came through. It didn't come through Ishmael and it didn't come through Esau. It came through Isaac and then Jacob and then the 12 tribes, the 12 sons of Jacob. That's, that's important and we have, to, we have to adhere to that. So what did the prophet tell us to do? He told us to study section 109 of the Doctrine and Covenants. That's the dedicatory prayer of the Kirtland Temple. And um, it it's... It's, I've been talking about this for way before the prophet did, right? <laughs> um, here's a prediction that in, I say it's going to be like three or four years before the Salt Lake Temple is rededicated. I think we're going to be asked to read the dedicatory prayer of the Salt Lake Temple, although it's politically incorrect, but um, I, I'm going to read a portion of that and uh, to show you why that would be. But, um, so Jacob 5 really, really nails it. But let's, let's go to a couple of scriptures here that it should just drive home this idea of the covenant being the root and the tree and also going through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? Now, here in Deuteronomy... 
or excuse me, in Genesis chapter 12, this is the Abrahamic covenant. And Abram, get thee out of thy country. Um, this is verse one in chapter 12 of Genesis. Uh, and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will shew thee. And I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Now you could say, okay, that's Abraham and that's done. It's a done deal. But then let's go to Genesis um, 25. Let's go to Genesis 25, okay? And, and we're gonna read here uh, what it says. Now, this is Abraham marries and again and blah, blah, blah. And, um, and in verse five of chapter 25, and Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac. And that included the covenant. And then in verse 23, um, well, that, 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 that's, that's a little complicated, but, but let's, let's just, uh, let's, let's go to Genesis 26. Let's see here. And sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee and will bless thee for unto thee and unto thy seed, I will give all these countries and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. This is Isaac. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven and will give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. That is through Isaac. So we can't just say Abraham and then this blessing and covenant, covenant applies to every. Now there, there was a blessing to Ishmael. There's no question, but the covenant the covenant, the Abrahamic covenant went through Isaac, okay? Now, now we have to make the connection from Isaac to Jacob, okay? And I think we, so I think we nailed down some really good verses, Genesis 25, 5 and Genesis 26, 3 through 4 concerning Isaac. Now, let's go to Genesis 28. Things clip along pretty fast with all these patriarchs, right? And um, let's go to verse 14 uh, of Genesis 28. And there are many, but let's, let's do this one. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Now, this is the continuation. This is Jacob. This is Jacob. So it was through Jacob um, that the blessing or the covenant went through. So this is critical. This is critical because we can't ignore these things in Scripture. Now, let's go to the dedicatory prayer now of the Curtain Temple. And let's read just one thing that pertains to to what we're talking about here today. There's, there's a ton in there. I've, I've studied it. I've read it many, many, many times. And I think um, um, there's, there's so much to glean from it. But, but on this particular thing, I want, to, I want to read. Now this is, think of how interesting this is to have a, a dedicatory prayer of a particular temple in Kirtland Ohio in in the year of 1831 1836 1836 and yet this is mentioned through revelation through the prophet Joseph Smith okay um, I'm going to start in uh, in verse 60 
Okay, 109, section 109, verse 60. Now these words, O Lord, we have spoken before thee concerning the revelations and commandments which thou hast given unto us who are identified with the Gentiles. This is key. But thou knowest that thou hast a great love for the children of Jacob who have been scattered upon the mountains for a long time in a cloudy and dark day. We therefore ask thee to have mercy upon the children of Jacob that Jerusalem from this hour may begin to be redeemed and the yoke of bondage may begin to be broken off from the house of David. That's key. And it gets even, he just narrows it down, narrows it down, narrows it down. Now listen to this. And the children of Judah may begin to return to the lands which did which thou didst give to Abraham their father. So here we have it, guys. This is right down to Judah or the Jews, okay? And cause that the remnants of Jacob, who have been cursed and smitten because of their transgression, be converted from their wild and savage condition to the fullness of the everlasting gospel that they may lay down their weapons of bloodshed and cease their rebellions, and may all the scattered remnants of Israel who have been driven to the ends of the earth come to the knowledge of truth, believe in the Messiah, which is, that's key, that the, he refers to Messiah, and be redeemed from oppression and rejoice before thee. So, uh, and uh, there's so much more uh, in this. But I picked this out because I think it's for, okay, so we've been told by President Nelson to read section 109. It's probably very difficult for him to come forward and re and say this right now. Um, I wish he would. I'd love it. But for political reasons, for the Public Affairs Department probably uh, counseled them not to specifically say Jews or the House of Judah or D David or anything like that. So what did what happened? It's just it's just Abraham, Abraham. Now look, you, I, I know exactly. Some of you are um, going to be so offended that I said it that way. Um, that it was that there was some thought of this and that it wasn't just direct revelation that he said Abraham but you know I'm I'm here to offend so I'll offend that group the other group will say uh, we we can't stand you watcher palmer because now you're saying that you love the prophet well I treat the prophet president nelson just like I would like tucker carlson there's things that I totally agree with and I'm on board with. And there's other things I'm like, man, you're off on this one. You're, you're, you're off on this one. But I still love you and I still listen to you. And obviously I sustain the prophet as a prophet and a seer and a revelator. But okay, so here we go. Um, this morning I listened to two um, different things. Um, one was Tucker Carlson, and one was um, Owen Schroyer, who who's on Alex Jones. And um, both of them talked about the jab. Uh, and and Tucker had a guest on who was a total left liberal lady, but when the jab came out and the pressure and the push, she just went, mm, I'm going to try to investigate this. And what happened was, is she had this whole circle of friends that just totally, uh, that, that, that were, you know, always protecting the minority and looking out for people's rights and stuff. And then all of a sudden, if you chose not to get the jab or wear the mask, they just like, her friends just abandoned her and left her, um, because of that so they didn't have tolerance they that they, they they excluded that group very interesting and uh, it, it 
this is what happened in the church. We, we had this group like this, and then all of a sudden, when the First Presidency made their statement that the, that the jab was safe and proven to be safe and effective and strongly urging all of the members to, 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 to take it, to get it, and to trust in government and, and medical profession. Well, this group, like I started the video with, like this, all of a sudden got like this, of, of people that, that within the church just went, no, I'm not doing it. Well, guess what? <laughs> you know how, how they, they were treated. Well, the fact that I disagreed with the prophet on that doesn't mean I didn't sustain him. See, look at the definition of sustain. So I can love the prophet, I can sustain the prophet, but there can be certain things that I go, hmm, the spirit tells me something a little bit different on this. And so immediately when he just, he, he kept referring to just Abraham, 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 and he didn't finish that the covenant continued through Isaac and Jacob. Now you'll say, well, he didn't need to. That's not what the reference was. Well, guess what? You could say Abraham, that then the covenant goes through everybody. And there's, there's no covenant people. Well, then why in a dedicatory prayer would, would it be specific of the Kirtland Temple? Would it be specific to say, we therefore ask thee, to have mercy upon the children of Jacob that Jerusalem from this hour may begin to be redeemed and the yoke of bondage may begin to be broken off from the house of David. David was a Jew from the tribe of Judah. And then verse 64, and the children of Judah may begin to return to the lands which thou didst give to Abraham their father. Hello, hello. So you, you can't ignore this. And the prophet asks us to read this. So, so I can go, hmm, didn't, didn't quite get what he was saying there. Oh, he's pointing us to here. What did the prophet do with the jab? Hmm, better live by the spirit. If you don't live by the spirit, you won't survive spiritually. If you don't have the constant guiding influence of the Holy Ghost, you won't be able to survive spiritually, something like that. So, so you take that as your filter, the filter of the scriptures and the filter of the Holy Spirit. Then, then when you hear something that comes from the church, from leadership or whatever, that just sounds a little like, uh, something doesn't feel, then, then you can you study and go, oh, okay. And, and then maybe get some, some reason why they said it the way they said it. Well, if he said anything about supporting the Jews right now, the prophet, <laughs> he probably doesn't want that headache right now. Now, I'd love it. I'd love him to say that. I'd love, I would have loved him to say, you know what? It's your choice as far as the jab and wearing a mask. It's your choice. That would have been awesome. But... And he could have even said, look, we're, we're a corporation. We're going to, the government's basically making us do this against our will. But as a corporation, we're going to require our employees to do this and that. We don't like it, but this is it. But you as general members, you decide on your own. That would have been great. And, and I think that's what the handbook, I don't think, I know that that's what the handbook said, and it was never changed. It's up to the individual. I I was harassed big time in, in within the church, and it finally got to the point where I said, "Is this gonna? If I don't do this, the the jab and the mask, am am, am I get, am I in jeopardy of losing my temple recommend?" And they said, "Well, of course not." And then I said, "Well, I don't really care about you know what." what all this is then, I, I don't care. Because that's the covenant, that's the covenant, right? Okay, now, I think I've established through scripture in, in, in the Old Testament, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the covenant goes through there, which includes property, priesthood, posterity, right? I think I've established in the dedicatory prayer 
that that is very specific, that the covenant went from Abraham all the way to Jacob and, and particularly the tribe of Judah that kind of represents the kingdom in Israel, um, that, that that is there. Now, I have one more reference. Salt Lake City Temple, Salt Lake Temple dedication. This was in 1893, right? Now, I'm just going to point out some highlighted uh, parts. This is, this is a great prayer to read. <laughs> it's a great read, and it's awesome. In the second paragraph, we have this. We thank thee, O thou great Elohim, that thou didst raise up thy servant, Joseph Smith, through the loins of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Through the loins of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I wonder why that dedicatory prayer said that and made him a prophet, seer, and revelator. Um, and then it goes through and it says, thou didst enable him to bring forth the Book of Mormon, the stick of Joseph in the hand of Ephraim. <laughs> in fulfillment of the prophecies of Isaiah. So that's cool, right? So there we have Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That that's where Joseph Smith came through, okay? Now we're just gonna skip. It's a long prayer. It's cool. There's a lot of references where, um, it's, it's Wilford Woodruff, right? It says, the God of Israel, the God of Israel, okay? So we're gonna skip that, skip that here. And thou... God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whose God thou delightest to be called, we thank thee with all the fervor of our overflowing gratitude that thou hast revealed the powers by which the hearts of the children are being turned to their fathers and the hearts of, their, of the fathers to the children, that the sons of men and all their generations can be made partakers of the glories of, and joys of the kingdom of God, Confirmed upon us the spirit of Elijah. This is this is awesome stuff. Okay, the fathers. There, there's their fathers, and then there's the fathers, and the fathers are Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, we can't just say Abraham. Now, let's go to here. This is, this is getting towards the, the last part of the prayer. Now listen to this and see if it doesn't sound a little bit like the dedicatory prayer of the Kirtland Temple. O God of Israel, turn thy face, we pray thee, in loving kindness towards thy stricken people of the house of Judah. This is at the Salt Lake Temple dedication. Why would we care... Why would the Lord care to inspire a prophet who's dedicating the Salt Lake Temple to talk about the house of Judah? So I'm gonna start this again. O God of Israel, I love that. Turn thy face, we pray thee, in loving kindness towards thy stricken people of the house of Judah. O deliver them from those that oppress them. Deliver them from those that oppress them. How, how can we, how can we, have this attitude of hating the Jews and Israel and always be defending those that hate Israel and Jerusalem. How, how can we do that? It's just sickening to me. Oh, deliver them. This is continuing to quote. Oh, deliver them from those that oppress them. Heal up their wounds, comfort their hearts, strengthen their feet and give them ministers after thine own heart who shall lead them as of old in thy way. <laughs> May the days of their tribulation soon cease and they may be planted by thee in the valleys and plains of their ancient home and may Jerusalem rejoice and Judea be glad for the multitudes of her sons and daughters. You know what we call Judea now? The West Bank. It's, it's, a, it's a lie. The West Bank is a lie. It's Judea and Samaria. That is what we're talking about. It's the heart, biblical heartland. And in the dedicatory prayer of the Salt Lake Temple, it mentions this, that, um, that they be planted, the Jews, 
by, uh, by thee in, in the valleys and the plains of their ancient home and made Jerusalem rejoice and Judea be glad for the multitudes of her sons and daughters, for the sweet voices of children in her streets and the rich outpouring of thy ser- saving mercies upon them. May Israel no more bow the head or bend the neck to the oppressor. (laughs) You you think they ought to just stop what they're doing in Gaza because, oh, it doesn't look good? Where, Where Hamas has sworn the death of Israel and every Jew, and they also kill Christians, and it, it, it just, oh, okay, let's, let's get back to this. But may his feet be made strong on the everlasting hills, never more by violence to be banished therefrom, and the praise and the glory shall be thine. Now, when it's talking about, but may his feet, it's talking about Judah. And then listen to this. You guys will love this. This is good. Remember in like pity the dwindling remnants of the house of Israel, descendants of thy servant Lehi. Restore them, we pray thee, to thine ancient favor. Fulfill in their com- in their completeness the promises given to their fathers and make of them a white and delightsome race, a loved and holy people as in former days. May the time also be nigh at hand when thou wilt gather the dispersed of Israel from the islands of the sea and from every land to which thou hast scattered them and the 10 tribes of Jacob from their hiding places in the north and restore them to communion and fellowship with their kinsmen of the seed of Abraham. We thank thee, O God of Israel, that thou didst raise up a patriotic man to lay the foundations of this great American government, that thou didst inspire them to frame a good constitution and laws which guarantee to all inhabitants of the land equal rights and privileges to worship thee according to the dictates of their own consciousness, or excuse me, consciences, consciences. Um, which is interesting because there for a while we, we lost that privilege um, because of the, the supposed pandemic. We lost that privilege to worship how we wanted to. Um, all visitors weren't welcome. Um, anyway, it's a, it was a sad, sad, sad day uh, during that time. Um, again, we, we thank thee, O God of Israel. I love that part. Um, and then um, I think that's all I wanted to cover there. But there's some interesting things there, right? Um, but I, so I think I've demonstrated through scripture that we have um, the, the covenant passing from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We have two dedicatory temple prayers that that. that that talk about Israel, Jerusalem, and Judah, having the land and having that covenant go through them, okay? And that we can be grafted in and enjoy the the covenant that God made with the three patriarchs. The last thing I wanted to talk about is an observation in the temple. Now, the as, as is well known, the endowment's been changed. Uh, the presentation has been changed dramatically in a short period of time. And one of the things I noticed is that the version in in there, uh, in the endowment of the creation is dramatically different than what we read in, in scripture. Um, there's no mention of a sixth day and or a seventh day or a day or, or a, um, uh, that we're going to rest. So there's no Shabbat, there's no Sabbath in, in the presentation in the endowment. So here's, here's what, here, here's what we read in, in Genesis. And, and then I'll go to the other versions of this. Um, so we have, um, uh, 
Let's see here. <laughs> okay. We have the third day, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament, and da -da, two great lights, okay. Uh, and the evening and the morning, and, and they were the fourth day, so we have the fourth day, and then we have... Uh, we have all the animals, and and that was the fifth day. And then God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures, all mankind, and, and that creepeth, and it was good. And let us make man in our image, in the likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the cattle. And God created them in his own image, male and female, and they subdued it, da da da. And God said, Behold, I have given every herb and seed and blessed. And God saw everything. It was very good. And that was the evening and the morning. And that was the sixth day. Okay. And the heavens and earth, and the seventh day, God ended his work, which he made, and he rested on the seventh day. That's all omitted um, as far as the sixth day and the seventh day. Now, it is interesting that all the beasts and the animals were and man were created on the sixth day. So that's interesting. Now, if we go to the book of Moses and <laughs> oh, boy, okay. And we have, um, which is the inspired version basically of the creation by Joseph Smith. Um, and then there's the fourth day, let the waters and the creation of the waters brought forth boldly after the very kind and saw that they were good and created. And God blessed them and said, be fruitful or, or multiply and fill the waters of the sea and multiply the earth. And that was the morning of the fifth day. And then, and I, God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures, cattle of every kind. And God made the beasts and did all that. And they, he saw it was good. And I, God said unto mine only begotten, let us make man in our image. And so, um, and I, God created mine. So, so the animals are created, but he hadn't created man but but we're still in this uh, in the sixth day, and and he created them, and I God bless them unto that replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and pond. And God said unto man, Behold, I have given every herb and blah blah blah, and the beast of the earth and creepeth life, and and I spake, and I God saw everything that I made, and behold, the things were good, and and were very good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And thus the heavens were finished and the host of them. And on the seventh day, I, God, ended my work and all things and I made and I rested. So even the inspired version, there, there's the Sabbath. That's the reason of the Sabbath. It all stems from that. And I can show, you know, the, the scriptures that go along with that uh, through through Moses, right? But, but just for the sake of time here, um, it's absent from the temple. So if our only reference, and if we said, oh, well, the temple um, has a different version, and so we're going to ignore what the scriptures teach. Big mistake, in my opinion. Big mistake. To ignore that there, and, and not say the sixth day ended, and, and that he finished his work on the seventh day, and then rested, um, To, to ignore that and say, well, the version in the temple doesn't teach that, so guess what? Well, then, then you don't have Sabbath day adver uh, 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 observant, observance because that's the whole basis of that is the creation. So very interesting that that's, that's left out. Um, but again, Look at all the other sources. Look at all the other sources. So when, when I hear the prophet just say Abraham, look at the other sources. 
that go Isaac and Jacob, then, okay, then I feel good and everything's fine. And I don't have to get mad at the prophet. I just go, hmm, that didn't ring true to just end it with Abraham. So I better check out the other sources. Use the filter of the Holy Spirit and the scriptures. You'll never go wrong. Um, if you just depend on the on just, just one thing here or one thing there, it, it's going to lead you d down a path that isn't true. And then if you combine the dedicatory prayers in scripture, or, or dedicatory prayer, I should say, section 109 of the Kirtland Temple, Salt Lake Temple, we don't have a scripture per se as canonized scripture, but still they both refer to Judah, Jerusalem, the covenant going through there. So, okay, I'm repeating myself, but that's good. Um, there's, there's other things to talk about, but uh, I'll end with this. Elder Cook, he, he said that we need to be one in Christ. So if we feel like our, our circle is getting smaller and smaller, <laughs> it's okay. Because if within that circle is Christ, that's all that really matters. That's all that really matters. Who cares if we have this big a circle or this tiny circle, as long as Christ is in there, right? If he's in there, then we're okay. We are blessed. And, and you, you need to acknowledge, though, that, that it, it, it is the time period that we are living in. Christ said he will divide. He will divide. And this is what I think is happening because when we are d divided, we're less dependent on all this around us and we become more and more dependent on Christ, centered on him in a small circle. We're dependent. We love him. We serve him. We believe in him and all those other things. So that's the message of today for me. And uh, there's so many other things to talk about. Um, the eclipse, <laughs> what it did to me is say, God is in charge of the universe. Look upward. Um, they testify of everything. To have the moon be the exact size it needs to be in the distance to block out the sun. And the sun is this, this size and, and, you know, like four times bigger or 400 times bigger than the moon. And yet... The moon is in such a position that it totally blocks it out in a certain spot, boom, you know. And then to have all those ties that we talked about with Ali Duzette, with our with our little daughter, granddaughter Jane, and all those meaningful things that, that happened. It was it was an overwhelming day of the Holy Spirit. So um, I could go on and on about that. It wasn't an easy day. Um, but it's those of you that have lost by lost had loved ones pass away, um, you know the, the triggers, you know, you can go on and things are great and wonderful and then something will trigger a memory or a feeling and it just is like, it, it's so immediate. It's almost like a car accident, you know, it's just like, boom, you know, you're, you're in this mood and now you're in this mood. And so that, that's kind of how those two days went because the following day was her, her date birthday her son's birthday was, was the eclipse day. Her date, and Allie explained all that. Her date birthday um, was the following day, and that, you know, those things happen. Well, anyway, okay. So that's it. God bless. I love you all. Um, we're, so, we're so thankful for you supporting this channel, supporting our sponsor, Cardio Miracle, for helping us out. Um, praying for us. We pray for you. We read every one of your comments. They're so uplifting and so helpful. Um, I will say this, uh, one negative one came up, and, and the reason why I, I want to bring this one up to end is that it, I use the word portals, temples or portals in the title, and some lady told me that that was evil and that it was you know, comparing to, to what Chad Daybell would say or vi the Visions of Glory book uh, and, and some of these others that, um, you know, might be considered, you know, evil and nut jobs or whatever. I don't know. I haven't read Visions of Glory, so I'm not being critical of that, but I'm just saying, 
You know, why are we so afraid to say like rapture or portals? It's so ridiculous. A gateway is what the prophet said, that the temples are a gateway. Well, a gateway and a portal is basically the same thing. You know, when a missionary, a young missionary or even a senior couple, when they have to start their paperwork, what do they do? They go into the missionary portal. <gasps> portal and missionary work. Oh my goodness, they go into a portal. Online portal. <laughs> and you can find other references. Um, I get it. It's not, it's not a word that we're used to. It's not evil. It's not evil. And, and if you look at the very definition and kind of figure it out, temples are exactly that. They are portals to the other side. They're, they're, and and these, these temples are all going to be connected. They're all going to be connected. And that's how we are going to be connected. And, and uh, this is the new Jerusalem prior to Christ's coming. There are two new Jerusalems. There's the one that Christ will bring from heaven and, and, uh, and the city of Enoch and all that. And then, and then there's the new Jerusalem that is built up prior to Christ's coming. And those keys and everything were restored in the Kirtland Temple and the stakes and the temples that are going on now. I mean, the prophet was all but clear on that, I think, um, about uh, what what these temples are. And the blessing of the Kirtland Temple of having the presence of the Lord, right? The presence of the Lord there. He said that promise applies to all temples. Hmm, very good. And that the Lord accepted that temple. Now, I, the, the other video I did previously to that was that the only scriptural basis we had was that he accepted the Kirtland Temple and, the Sol and Solomon's Temple. And I covered that in a previous video. And you can read where he, the Lord says, I accept these, you know, I, in, in both cases, he accept those temples. Well, now we have President Nielsen saying that all those temples, all the temples to today, the hundreds that we have, apply, the, that blessing applies to both being accepted by the Lord and that his presence will be there. That is a definition of the New Jerusalem. God bless. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.